Scorch Trials, Chapter 6, on this PDF, page 24. What's going on? Newt asked, looking back and forth between Thomas and Eris. Why are you guys looking at each other like you just fell in love? He can do it too, Thomas answered, not taking his eyes off the new kid, seeing the others only in his peripheral vision. That final statement by Eris had terrified him. If they'd killed his telepathy partner... Do what? Frypan asked. What do you think? Minot said. He's a freak like Thomas. They can talk in each other's heads. Newt was glaring at Thomas now. Serious? Thomas nodded and almost spoke to Eris in his mind again, but said it out loud at the last second. Who killed her? What happened? Who killed who? Minot said. No more of your voodoo clunk while we're around. Thomas's eyes were watering now finally broke his gaze with Eris and looked over at Minot. He had someone <clears throat> he could do this with, just like I did. I mean, do. But he said they killed her. I want to know who they are. Eris's head had dropped. His eyes looked closed from where Thomas sat. I don't really know who they are. It's too confusing. I couldn't tell the bad guys from the good guys, but I think somehow they made this girl, Beth, stab my friend. Her name was Rachel. She's dead, man. She's dead. He covered his face with both hands. Thomas felt an almost painful prick of confusion. Everything pointed to Eris's having come from another version of the maze, set up in the same format except with the ratio of girls to boys being switched. But that would make Eris their version of Teresa, and this Beth sounded like their version of Galley, who'd killed Chuck with a knife. Did that mean that Galley was supposed to have killed Thomas instead? But why was Eris here now? And where was Teresa? Things that had almost started to click in his mind fell apart again. Well, how'd you end up with us? Newt asked. Were, where are all these girls you keep talking about? How many of them escaped with you? Did they bring all of you here or just you? Thomas couldn't help but feel sorry for Eris. To get grilled with all these questions after something like that had happened, if the roles were switched, if Thomas had seen Teresa get killed, watching it happen to Chuck had been bad enough. Bad enough, he thought. Or was seeing Chuck die worse? Thomas wanted to scream. At that moment, everything in the world just sucked. Eris looked up finally, wiped a couple of the tears from his cheeks. He did it without the slightest hint of shame, and Thomas suddenly knew that he liked this kid. Look, the boy said, I am just as confused as everyone else. About 30 of us survived. They took us to that gym, fed us, cleaned us up. Then they brought me to this place last night, saying I should be in a separate space since I'm a guy. That's it. Then you stinks showed up. Stinks, Minot repeated. Eris shook his head. Never mind. I don't even know what it means. Just a word they used when I got there. Minot exchanged a glance with Thomas, half smiling, looked like both groups had come up with their own vocabulary. Hey, one of the gladers Thomas didn't really know called to him. He was leaning against the wall behind Eris, pointing at him. What's that on the side of your neck? Something black, right below your collar. Eris tried to look down, but couldn't bend his neck to see that part of his body. What? Thomas saw a dark splotch just above the neckline of the boy's pajama shirt as he shifted around. It appeared to be a thick line stretching from the hollow of his collar collarbone around to his back, and it was broken up like it might be lettering. Here, let me look, Newt offered. He stood from the bed and walked over. His limp from something in the past he'd never shared with Thomas, showing more than usual. He reached out and pulled Eris's shirt down so that he could see the odd marking better. It's a tattoo, Newt said, squinting as if he didn't believe his eyes. What's it say? Minot asked, 
though he'd already gotten up from the bed and approached to get his own look. When Newt didn't answer right away, curiosity forced Thomas to his feet, and soon he was right beside Minot, leaning over to see the tattoo himself. What he saw printed there in blocky letters made his heart skip a beat. Property of Wicked, Group B, Subject B1, The Partner. What's that supposed to mean? Minot asked. What does it say? Eris asked, reaching around to feel the skin of his neck and his shoulders, pulling his shirt collar down. I swear it wasn't there last night. Newt repeated the words to him, then said, Property of Wicked, I thought we'd escape them, or you'd escape them too, whatever. He turned around, visibly frustrated, and went back to sit on his bed. And why would it call you the partner? Minot asked, still staring at the tattoo. Eris shook his head. I don't have a clue, I swear, and there's no way that that was there before last night. I showered, looked in the mirror. I would have seen it and someone would have noticed it back in the maze for sure. You're telling me they tattooed you in the middle of the night, Minot said, without you noticing. Come on, dude. I swear, Eris insisted. Then he got up and went to the bathroom, probably to try to see the words for himself. I don't believe a shuck word he says, Minot whispered to Thomas on his way back to his seat. Then, just as he leaned forward to plop back down on the mattress, his shirt shifted enough to reel a thick line on the back of his neck. Whoa, Thomas said for a second. He was too stunned to move. What, Minot asked, Tom, looking at Thomas as if he'd just sprouted a third ear on his forehead. Your, your neck, Thomas finally got out. You have it on your neck, too. What the shuck you talking about, Minot said, pulling at his shirt, face scrunched up, as he struggled to see something he couldn't. Thomas ran over to Minot, slapped his hands away, then pulled the neckline of his shirt back. Holy, it's right there. Same thing, except Thomas read the words to himself. Property of Wicked. Group A, subject A7, the leader. What? Dude, Minot yelled at him. Most of the other gladers had gathered in a tight group behind Thomas, squeezing in to get a look. Thomas quickly read the tattooed words out loud, surprised he did it without stumbling on them. You're kidding me, man, Minot said, standing up. He pushed his way through the crowd of boys to follow Eris to the bathroom, and then the frenzy began. Thomas felt his own shirt tugged down as he pulled at others. Everyone started talking over everyone else. They all say Group A, property of wicked, just like this. You're subject A13, subject A19, A3, A10. Thomas was slowly turning in a circle, dazed as he watched the gladers discover the tattoos on each other. Most of them didn't have the additional designations like Eris and Minot, just the property line. Newt was going from boy to boy looking for himself, his face set in stone as if he were concentrating on memorizing the names and numbers. Then, quite by accident, the two of them stood facing each other. What does mine say? Newt asked. Thomas pulled the neckline of Newt's shirt to the side, then leaned over to read the words etched into his skin. Your subject, A5, and they called you the glue. Newt gave him a startled look. The glue? Thomas let go of his shirt and stepped back. Yeah, probably because you're kind of like the glue that holds us all together. I don't know, read mine. I already did. Thomas noticed that an odd expression had come over Newt's face, one of hesitation or dread, like he didn't want to tell Thomas what his tattoo said. Well? Your subject, A2, Newt answered. Then he lowered his eyes. And, Thomas pushed. Newt hesitated, then answered without looking at him. It doesn't call you anything. It just says, to be killed by group B.